Hey guys, let's get more news about Warriors, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. How Jonathan Kuminga, Andrew Wiggins keep Warriors long shot title hopes alive. The Golden State Warriors used an utterly dominant third quarter to blow past the Memphis Grizzlies at Chase Center on Wednesday, resulting in a feel-good 137-116 victory. A stirring finish to the first half and utterly dominant start to the second turned a once-competitive game into a laugher, allowing Stephen Curry and Draymond Green some much-needed rest late as the sprint to the postseason begins. Jonathan Kuminga was electric against the injury-ravaged Grizzlies, skying for several highlight reel dunks and banging two triples en route to 26 points, five rebounds, four assists, and two steals. Andrew Wiggins was far more understated yet nearly as impactful for Golden State, an encouraging sign as the lethargy that marked his dire early season struggles had begun creeping up yet again. He finished with 22 points, nine rebounds, including six on the offensive glass, and three assists, playing with palpable energy and force on both sides of the ball from the opening tip. Green was a two-way difference maker for the Warriors, giving his team some necessary life after exchanging shoves with Desmond Bain in the second quarter. Chris Paul played like the point god while pulling strings of the dub second unit, Clay Thompson had the hot hand off the bench and Tracy Jackson Davis continued making his presence felt offensively and defensively at the rim. Golden State doled out a season-high 43 assists compared to just six turnovers, three of which came in the game's opening minutes, and a 142.7 offensive rating is its second best so far. Not bad on a night Curry took just nine shots, right? Looking ahead to the postseason, though, nothing from the Warriors' blowout win is more significant than what this team can still look like when Kaminga and Wiggins scrape their peaks simultaneously. It goes back a couple of months now. You see a game like tonight, we've come so far just in terms of figuring out lineup combinations, those two guys individually playing well together, Steve Kerr told clutch points of the Kaminga Wiggins combination. We didn't have that early in the season. I think where we are right now, we're in a good place. We've got a lot of guys playing extremely well in their roles, and the combinations all make a lot of sense. Tonight was good example of why I believe in this team, he continued, because we do have a lot of talent and we're starting to put it together. Curry, Green and Thompson still comprise Golden State's dynastic core. Jackson Davis' influence as a rim roller and rim protector has quickly become indispensable, and Paul, who Kerr went out of his way to praise on the post-game podium, is quietly playing his best basketball in a Warriors uniform since returning from injury. The dub's depth of quality players even beyond their 10-man rotation always looms large. But none of that will matter come the play-in tournament nor playoffs unless Kaminga and Wiggins affect the game like they did on Wednesday, giving Golden State steady doses of athleticism and versatility every team needs to win at the highest level. It's the force that he played with tonight. I thought it was maybe the best game I've ever seen him play on both ends, Kerr said of Kaminga. He was playing with intensity defensively, he got deflections, he was guarding the ball. But the way he played downhill, sprinting the floor, he is so fast. He's electric. He's really learning to use that more often in key times, and I thought tonight he was just brilliant. How many players in basketball could make Memphis rookie Gigi Jackson look this slow in the open floor? Dre shares heartfelt father-daughter moment after Warriors win. What happens on the court, stays on the court. That appears to be the motto Draymond Green was adhering to Wednesday night following the Warriors' 137-116 win over the Memphis Grizzlies at Chase Center. While speaking to reporters, the Warriors forward had a heartwarming father-daughter moment, consoling his daughter after an apparent disagreement with her brother, Green's son DJ. Y'all fighting a little bit? Green asked his daughter. Okay, go give your brother a hug. Give your sister a hug, like a real hug. Thank you. Ironically, 
Hours before Green gave a class of quintessential parenting, the 34-year-old had a chippy moment of his own, prompting both the Golden State and Memphis benches to clear after a second-quarter scuffle with Grizzlies forward Santi Aldama. As both teams came to a head-to-head -head clash at the center of the court, Green and Grizzlies guard Desmond Bain exchanged a series of shoves, earning both players technical fouls for the incident. Since his return from an indefinite NBA suspension on January 15, Green has picked up two technical fouls, taking his 2023-24 season count to eight. But if Wednesday's press conference proved anything, it's not just what happens on the court that matters. Draymond Green gets into scuffle, sends Grizzlies coach to floor. Another Memphis Grizzlies vs. Golden State Warriors game, and you just know there's going to be some heat. This time, it was Desmond Bain from the Grizzlies and Draymond Green from the Warriors getting into it, with the referees having to jump in to break things up. It all started when Santi Aldama of the Grizzlies went head-to-head -head with Green after scoring a rebound against him. Green pushed Aldama, and things started heating up. The refs didn't intervene right away, so tensions rose. Coach Taylor Jenkins called for a timeout and went to talk to the refs about what went down. But then, Green got a bit too close to Jenkins for Bain's liking and tried to push him away, which just added fuel to the fire. Gary Payton II of the Warriors even tried to pull Green out of the mess, but ended up shoving him into Jenkins, who took a tumble. Luckily, things didn't escalate too far. Green and Bain got slapped with double technical fouls, but nobody got ejected, and the game continued without any more drama. Surprisingly, Green and Bain were seen shaking hands shortly after, showing some mutual respect. Now, Green has had quite the season, with a couple of suspensions under his belt for getting physical on the court. Once in November for tangling with Rudy Gobert, and again in December for throwing a spinning back fist at Joseph Nurkic. The NBA wasn't pleased with his track record of unsportsmanlike behavior, hence the hefty punishments. As for the stats, Green's been averaging 8.8 .8 points, 7.1 assists, and 6.0 rebounds per game. Despite missing some key players, Memphis still had Aldama and Bain in the mix, both familiar faces in the ongoing rivalry between the Grizzlies and the Warriors. These teams have had some intense matchups in recent years, from postseason clashes to Christmas Day showdowns. Sure, neither team might be leading the Western Conference this season, but you can bet the intensity is always there when they face off. And you, fan, what do you think of the situation Taylor Jenkins? Leave your opinion in the comments.